Hey everyone, this is Ross, and today I'm going to be showing you a series of clips of me actually setting up the fish tank. So last video we just did a time lapse video, and that was really just a cinematic video with no explanation whatsoever. So for today we could actually uh, have a look at my what I've recorded on my head cam as I was setting up the fish tank, and actually talk through a bit of the process. So a lot of this is going to be sped up just because it took so long, it took over an hour. Um, and as you saw, I've done a lot of preparations leading up to this. So I've washed the tank, I've got the wood ready, I've tied the plants to the wood, uh, I've washed the aqua soil, and uh, I've also separated the plants and I've been keeping them moist by spraying them. So this is really the outcome of uh, everything I've been doing to get to this point. So the first thing I did was I took the washed fluval stratum, which is the aqua soil I'm using, and it's still damp here. Um, so it makes it a lot easier to sculpt and basically put in as a substrate and with the substrate I was aiming at uh, making an embankment towards the back just so it kind of presents itself to the viewer so that's the kind of shape I've made there you can use a card for this just like a bank card there's a special tool you can get as well on eBay and Amazon um, but I just chose just to use my hand just because it's just as easy and I, I kind of prefer it so if you don't have a special tool you can just sculpt it with your hand um, so the next step now, before I started um, aquascaping, I actually tied the two bits of wood to this uh, piece of dragonstone here, and I just wedged all the java fern and the nooks and crannies in it. Uh, the only bit of java fern which is actually tied to the wood is the bit on the right hand side, on the long spindly bit, and the rest is actually just wedged in there. So you can play around with it, uh, see what you think's best. Um, but I actually found it quite easy just to wedge it in and it didn't take much time at all. You can see I'm having a bit of trouble with that uh, spindly bit just towards the front of the tank there. And I actually I'll try and snap it off in a minute. So just try and mess around with the hardscape in the tank. And find a layout that you really like. I'm lucky because I found a few bits of wood. I uh, laid them out on the floor and I found um, the way I like them. So I already had an idea of how it was going to sit in the tank and I'd measured everything up and made sure basically it was just big enough to fit in the tank. So I didn't actually have the problem of um, moving it around in the tank too much because there was only one way it would go in. I've just snapped off that uh, little twig there that was just getting in the way. And that's a good thing about these roots, you can just snap it and uh, reshape it as much as you want. Um, you can actually silicone it to the rock. Uh, if you don't want to tie it on with thread or fishing line, I've just used uh, sewing thread to tie it on uh, just until it gets waterlogged after a few months. Okay, so I've decided on the final placement of the hardscape, which is the wood, and uh, I'm just backfilling with some of the aqua soil. So I'm just using what's left in the bag, and you got a lot in this bag actually. I was quite pleased with it. It was just on sale in one of my local pet shops, and I'm um, kind of bringing it a bit lower towards the front there uh, just so it's raised up at the back um, and I was trying to make a bit of a mound towards the left hand side of the tank the left back side um, to create like a bit of a hill effect just to create some more interest and this is kind of a lopsided aquascape so I've got a lot going on the left hand side and not a lot going on the right hand side um, but the only way you'll know how to do this is just to play around with it yourself and uh, see what looks attractive here I'm just spraying all the plants, keeping them moist because they are aquatic plants and um, they do best obviously underwater. A lot of them will dry out and kind of turn into mush um, if you're not careful. The hardier plants, uh, like the Java fern and Anubius, they'll actually be okay for some time dried out, uh, but I wouldn't recommend it for like thinner plants like oxygenating weeds and mosses. So here I've just got the first bit of dragonstone and I tied some java moss to it. Um, so I'm just trying to find a place to put it in the tank. Now I did have a, a thought of putting it in the front of the tank here uh, earlier on, but I just feel it takes up too much room. So then I tried the back. Um, downside of putting it in the back is there might be plants in the front which overshadow it and don't allow you to see in the back of the tank. Um, so I, I kind of chose to put it in the back although I am regretting it now. I'm actually uh, doing this voiceover a couple of weeks after, so I know how the tank turned out in the end, and uh, I think it would have went better in the front. So that's something I might move around in the future. But in general, you should try and keep um, small mosses and uh, different 
um, plants that aren't very high in the front of the tank just so you can still see them uh, because the other plants tend to grow around them and, and mask them uh, so that's the two moss stones set in place now um, just going for this plant, I'll put the name on the screen for you now, <laughs> I've forgotten it I still need to get used to the different plants uh, now this wasn't a very good idea because this is actually a foreground plant as well I just forgot it at the time uh, it kind of looked like a background plant, it looked like it might grow up to be long stems but it's actually a foreground plant so I might move this around as well in the future and just have the more oxygenating weeds at the back it's still thriving, it's still doing really well in the tank but it's just kind of out of view unless you look at the side view of the tank and the way I'm planting these as well as you can see I'm just using my hand just using the cheap guys approach but there is uh, planting tools uh, on the internet or your local pet shop and they make it a lot easier especially in uh, s tanks as small as this like nano aquariums and it helps you plant them without disturbing uh, the hardscape in the tank too much or disturbing other plants because what you find is uh, when you plant one you might disturb the plants next to it and inadvertently dig them up a bit um, so it's definitely worthwhile getting a proper planting tool and all they look like is a big pair of tongs really long tongs that you can just in grab the roots and insert a few plants at a time into like little bunches uh, insert the roots really deep just so when you fill a tank up the plants don't come floating up but yeah, I'm just kind of punching the plants together, grabbing them by the roots, making a hole in the aqua soil with my thumb um, of just like an inch deep, and then putting the plant in and backfilling using my uh, index finger and and the other fingers, and just burying them best I can because what tends to happen is when you fill up the tank, uh, a lot of the plants will just come floating straight up, and it's quite demoralising after you've just stood there for an hour or two uh, putting them all in place. So that's the next plant going in now. And I really like this one. It's a really fast. <laughs> just check my time lapse there. Uh, it's a really fast grower. This one. Uh, very big fan of uh, fast growing plants. But then again, it doesn't suit everyone's lifestyle. Because if you don't have the time to trim them all the time, they will rapidly kind of grow out of control in your tank. And I suppose it's good if you've got things like baby fish and shrimp who love just chilling in the plants and hiding so it's not too much of an issue as long as uh, you don't mind not seeing the fish for a while or seeing the shrimp for a while um, but like me I, I work away a lot um, most weeks I'm I'm away for a few days at least um, so fast growing plants aren't too ideal for my lifestyle but when I do come home on the weekends I just make sure I set aside half an hour an hour just to give them a trim here you can see I'm just spraying all the plants in the tank not forgetting about the plants in the tank it's not just the ones on the floor you've got to worry about um, so just keep them all humid and then you see here in a minute um, I wipe down the glass just so you can see on the time lapse and you, remember you can see the time lapse again uh, in the last video I put on I'll put a link on screen now for you um, in terms of trimming your plants um, you can just take a normal pair of scissors um, just put your hand in and start trimming them. You can actually rip them. So like oxy oxygenating plants, you can kind of tear and cut in half with your your fingers if you're on a tight budget. Uh, or you can actually get, I prefer, I've just got a pair of some um, kind of plant scissors, aquarium scissors. And much like the, um, the planting tongs, they're just very long scissors uh, with a curved end. Um, so you can basically reach down into the tank with it uh, you don't even have to get your hands wet in a tank this this shallow and uh, easily trim the plants and that's my pr preferred method of trim them now so as I say it only takes 20 minutes to half an hour a week uh, do it at the same time as you do a water change and uh, trim the plants or you can just let it grow out of control I'm sure the fish won't mind too much about having too many plants in the tank just putting the next plant in now bunching it all together and I actually tore off some of these roots just because there's uh, there was so many and it was found it quite hard to plant. Trimming the ends of the roots can actually encourage the roots to grow more vigorously and the plant just to grow a bit faster. Uh, some people trim the roots, some people don't. I personally do just to make it a bit easier to plant. 
Uh, so that's two of those plants in the front, and they've probably grown the fastest and thickest out of any any of the plants in my tank. Uh, so I'm really happy with how they turned out. Real centerpiece in the tank. Uh, but I might move them towards the background because they are kind of background plants. I just put them in the middle just to create uh, an obstacle basically for the fish to swim around as well as the wood. Look quite interesting. So moving on to the dwarf sage now, or Sagittaria subulata. And uh, this plant's great for the foreground. In in bigger tanks, it's especially good for the foreground. But in smaller tanks like this, it, it kind of grows about half the height of the tank. And uh, sometimes sporadically, one or two of them will just shoot to the surface. And that just happens from time to time. And if you find, if you cut off those long leaves, they might just send up more and more. So uh, try and keep it slightly higher light just to keep the leaves a bit smaller on the dwarf sag, Sagittarius obulata. But uh, I'm a big fan of this plant, and it's actually re worked out really well in this tank. It still looks a bit sparse and a bit messy, um, even a few weeks after setting up the tank, which is when I'm uh, doing this voiceover. And that's just because there's so few in there. I'd like to have a thick kind of lawn of it, like a grassy effect in the front. And eventually it'll get like that because it sends out runners, um, which are basically small plantlets that come out from the main plant. And they, they kind of go underneath the gravel, underneath the soil. And then you get new plants popping up all over the substrate, which is now what's happening. So I can say with confidence, after about three weeks, you do get the dwarf sags popping up all over. And that's the same with uh, Val, or Valisneria as well. It just sends up loads of different runners uh, all over the tank, and very quickly you end up with a big curtain wall of it. Um, so yeah, one of my favourite plants, dwarf sags, and it does really well in these um, aqua soil tanks. Tanks where there's lots of nutrients for them to send runners out and find. Uh, alternatively, they do well in graveled aquariums or sandy aquariums. I used to have uh, my big tank, I used to have a sand substrate, and I just had uh, root tabs, root fertilizers, and I just have one of those every few inches so when they send out the runners, they can find all these nutrients and all the plants link together and kind of share the nutrients. See, I'm just trimming some of the roots, pulling off some of the dead leaves if I've missed any when I was preparing the plants. And just insert them one by one into the foreground there. Bit of a fiddly job this, because as you can see the wood is kind of getting in the way a bit. And the dwarf sags I've already planted in the surrounding area has got long leaves that spread out sideways. So it kind of gets in the way a little bit. But I'm just getting on the last few plants now. Just making little holes, inserting them, giving them a little tug back to the surface just to right those roots back uh, in a vertical fashion. Now I'm just looking at any spaces to fill in and I'm just leaving a bit of open ground towards the front. Some people like to put a different type of gravel or substrate in the front and you can do this just by making a cardboard divider. So you're just cutting a strip of cardboard, a cereal box card, running it along the, the length of the tank and fill the front with sand or, or gravel just to create a different kind of beachy effect or a different texture. So I might do that next time. If you notice, the height of the gravel in the front isn't as thick as the back, but it is still relatively thick. It is still at least an inch. And that's just so the plants have somewhere to spread the roots, because in a planted tank, the roots are really important. You want a lot of space for the roots to spread out, because um, a lot of the plant isn't visible above the um, the gravel. It's actually underneath. Just the last, last few stragglers I'm putting in there now. A few in the corner. And it's really starting to come together now and look like a heavily planted tank. You don't need to start out with as many plants as this. Obviously they will grow. And already my moss is growing a lot. And I've actually cut bits of that and I'm using it for other projects I've got going on. So now I've just moved on to filling it up. And uh, the method I've used is I've just got some cling film. Uh, bunched it up in my hands in the big balls. And I carefully covered all the hardscape and the plants in the tank. And then I put one final layer on top, and that is just to protect all the plants from floating up when you're putting the water in. And you can see I've got the slow and laborious task of filling the tank up with uh, a jar here. Um, I'd like to, in the future, get uh, a big tub and a, 
a power head, like a pump, just to pump water directly up into the tank. But because it's such a small tank, it didn't take too long to fill up this method. Um, so just kept on making trips to the, the sink, making sure it's kind of room temperature water, I don't want to shock the plants or anything, and pouring it in a way where it's not going to disturb the substrate or the plants. So just little little pores on top of the, the cling film. You can get a plate in bigger aquariums and just lay the plate on the substrate or, the, or a bowl upside down and you can pour it on top of the bowl and it should disperse some of the water flow coming out. So now I'm just squeezing out some of the cling film and it might leave a, a slight oily residue on top of your water but if you leave, just leave it set up for a day or two it should go or you can just do half water changes until it clears. So now you can see the tank it's quite uh, cloudy after I fill it up and sometimes that's just what happens with the aqua soil uh, but I think it's turned out quite well. So it's the next day now and the tank's been set up overnight and the first thing you'll notice is just the water is a lot clearer than what it was yesterday when I was setting it up. Um, so even though I did rinse the aqua soil there was still a bit of dust and debris left in it um, but overnight it's really started to clear up. Still a little bit misty if you look on the side but it does say on the aqua soil um, packet that it is actually safe for fish this dust in the water. I'm not going to put fish in yet, I'm going to wait at least four days then stick in a few endler guppies I'm thinking just a few females and one male try and get them to breed now it'll just be something to do and then that'll lead to other tanks being set up and whatnot. but I think this is a perfect little tank for them plenty cover for the babies to hide uh, until they're big enough um, you can see I've got the moss in the back there tied to the dragon stone and that'll be really good if I get things like cherry shrimp so I could get them breeding in here as well plenty of places for fish and shrimp to hide there's actually a little cave um, just being created by the wood there so that's actually all hollow inside where the fish can hide uh, the thermometer has just fell off not long ago so I'm going to stick that back on but yeah the heat is working, it's at the right temperature I'm keeping it about 24 degrees celsius it should be fine for most tropical fish and um, got the little hang on back filter here now I do really like this filter and it has got a lot of output my only problem with it is not so much with the filter but it's with the design of it for the type of tank I've got I found this with a light as well because of this plastic lip on these cheap tanks it's actually quite hard to mount anything on the back so you can see because this is built for nano tanks it's only got a little hang on back section and I've had to really push down on the filter and wedge it onto the side of the aquarium so it's basically just a temporary fix I'm not going to keep this filter I'm going to keep it but I'm not going to use it on this tank basically I might use it for fry tanks in the future um, but what it is doing is putting lots of oxygen in the tank you can see a few bubbles there and the reason why it's putting so many bubbles in the tank is because it is hooked on so high up on the tank the water is having to drop a long way back into the tank um, so that's making it quite noisy um, in terms of filter media, for the time being, because it's the first 24 hours, I've just got in some polymer filter wool. And you can see how that's stained black there, just in less than 24 hours. So that shows it's doing its job and it's removing all the particulates from the tank. But you can see on the right hand side of the filter, there's actually water spilling back over from the inlet of the filter. So that's unfiltered water just going straight back into the tank. So this filter does get clogged very easily. Um, perhaps it's the type of filter medium I'm using, maybe I should use some uh, more coarse sponge, which I think is what I'm going to do. Um, but yeah, I'm actually going to try this internal filter which came with the tank. I know I said I wasn't going to do this, because it takes up more room in the tank, but it's not the biggest. It says it's 320 litres per hour, let's see how true that is. That might be a little bit too much for the tank, but we'll put it in and, and try anyways, we'll have a look. I'll just show you inside the filter. Uh, inside here I've just got some coarse filter foam and I'm going to use this as my biological and my mechanical filter media. So biological meaning it'll harbour the bacteria that cleans the fish waste and mechanical just because it catches some particulates. So I'm going to use um, a couple blocks of this in this in this cartridge and also a little bit of filter wool just to remove the finer particulates. And here's a, a look actually inside the pump housing. So there's the impeller that'll spin and it'll draw in water through here and spit out the output there. 
Um, so yeah, I'm going to remove this filter and try this one in the tank. Okay, so that's the internal filter in the tank now. And I'm actually straight away a lot more happy with this than the hanging back filter. Um, it's really quiet for one, which is really important since it's in my bedroom. And I couldn't really get to sleep with the other one. And it does actually look quite powerful. You can see it's an inch and a bit underwater. And you can actually see some surface movement up here. I'm going to play around with it over the next few days. And move it closer to the surface to get the right amount of uh, surface movement. But I'm quite happy with that. Certainly looks a lot more powerful than the other one. So this is going to turn the tank water around quite a few times every hour. Uh, one downside from it is it's kind of stirred up some of the dust from the aqua soil. So you might not be able to make it out on camera, but it definitely looks a bit more um, kind of misty in there. Um, so that's with the dust being stirred up from the bottom. But really happy with how this tank's turned out. Um, didn't actually take long to aquascape, only took uh, about an hour, um, so it wasn't too bad. You can see a lot of the plants in the back as well. Um, the taller plants, this will grow right up to the top, I'm predicting in the next couple of weeks. Uh, anyways, let me know your thoughts. Let me know what fish I should get in about five days when I'm going to start putting the fish in. Uh, the first few, I'm definitely going to put in endless live bearer guppies. Um, just because I really like the colours, the little fish, they're not going to add much to the biological load on the tank. Um, and I'd like to breed some fish as well. It's something I've never really dabbled into much. I bred the goldfish a few years ago, but... Endless live bearers, definitely. So I'll get a male and a few females. Um, and yeah, leave any other suggestions. Should I get shrimp? I've got the moss in the back. Uh, if I was to get some cherry shrimp so they could graze on that. Um, obviously got the hole in the wood. That stuff can hide there. And it's a very heavily planted tank. So lots of hiding places for the fish. Just stuck with the monitor back on the glass there as well. So that's reading about 22 degrees Celsius. So I want to get up to about 24, 26. So I've just turned the heater up and I've just added some live bacteria culture so in about five five days of the week should be ready for the first few fish and I'll just add a few fish at a time probably max load on this tank is about seven or eight little fish or I'll say six fish and and uh, some cherry shrimp so we'll see how we'll go but leave your thoughts in the comments so if you like the video um, please leave a like comment and subscribe thanks a lot for watching